Nashville, Music City, home to the Grand Ole Opry and Honky Tonk Row. Like every American city, it has a dark side. There is part of there is forgiveness for sin if you would turn away from sin. And just like every big city, prostitution thrives here. For the women involved, it's an endless cycle of abuse. Nashville, though, has a unique rehab program, which has become a national model. We spent time with recovering prostitutes in the program. We don't have to really get out and do too much. I'll do that, Tara. No, I'll do it. Okay. Shoot, I'm ready to do this. Sheila Simpkins has been clean for seven years. Her best friend, Tara Adcock, recently relapsed after four years clean. They took us on a tour of where they used to walk the streets. This is the bottoms uh, of South uh, Nashville. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is where all the roughnecks are. This is uh, a pretty rough area. Yep. This and, is where... and I walked around, I walked around here at like four or five o'clock in the morning like I belonged, okay? Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. But could you imagine walking alone out here by yourself, getting in a car with a stranger that you don't even know and having sex with them? That, we were, I, I think about that stuff now, I'm like, I was crazy. But people do crazy things to feed an addiction. And for Tara Adcock, that addiction started early. I met this guy that was a pimp, and um, he took me under his wing and took real good care of me, fed me with dope and gave me clothes, a place to live. And I thought I was just in heaven, and then one day he told me, hit the block. And so I started prostituting from age 17 until I was 33. Um, I had four years clean, and I relapsed about um, two months ago. I started drinking on New Year's Eve, and um, then I started smoking crack. I'm very humiliated right now. So I went and got my old job back because I'm so ashamed of myself, you know, because I was doing so good. I got my own house, had my own car. Did you go back to prostitution? No, no. Mm -hmm. It didn't make it that far, thank God. Mm -hmm. Tara's been struggling to stay clean for years. She's gotten this far with the help of Episcopal priest Becca Stevens. You know, and the truth is no one, no one went to the streets by themselves. It took a lot of failed systems and a lot of, you know, brokenness to get them out there. And it's crazy to think they're going to get off by themselves. It takes that same community to welcome them back. In 1997, Stevens founded a community called Magdalene, based on the 12-step model. Becca Stevens is a chaplain at Vanderbilt University. Her inspiration for Magdalene came in part from her own story of childhood sexual abuse. And I had always been drawn to the women, I think partly because of my own experience and partly because I have um, all the passion and desire to believe that love can change the world, and this was a way, in a small way, to try to live out that belief. Stevens started with five women. Today, Magdalene owns six group houses. The women live here for two years, receiving therapy and training so they can become self-sustaining. Three quarters of its graduates stay clean. And best of all, it's free. The program is financed by donations. Stevens has raised $12 million and begun a small business run by the recovering women called Thistle Farms. They make body care products by hand and paper from thistles. The thistle is a, it's a hard, rugged weed. It grows in the country. Uh, don't need water, it's drought, ugly looking, thorny. And we represent the thistle because when we first come into the program, we're hardcore, all them beat up, broke down, you know, can't tell us nothing. <laughs> Penny Hall was on the streets most of her life. She was arrested scores of times before a judge told her it's either prison or Magdalene. She's been clean for nearly three years. Um, I never thought I'd be in a place making healing, oh, I really didn't. That was a. Uh, my addiction when I was out there, I mean, that was the last thing I ever thought. That I'd... She never thought it, because before Magdalene, Penny lived under a bridge for a decade. She kept a CB radio with her and sold herself to truckers at a nearby truck stop. I have never met a woman in 20 years coming off the streets of Nashville, Tennessee, who has not been raped. I have never met a woman coming off the streets of Nashville, Tennessee, that, you know, chose prostitution as their preferred career at the age of six, seven, eight, and nine. And I never met a woman coming off the streets of Nashville, Tennessee, who hadn't seen the inside of prison walls, 
the short side of all the justice we have to offer and the underside of bridges, you know, the circumstances and some of the choices have led to a really dangerous and hellish lifestyle. I've been raped, um, never told anybody. Uh, my mother left me with a babysitter one day and he molested me and he told me if I told anybody, he was gonna get my sister, so I never told nobody about that. But mother, she's passed away now. She'd be so proud. My family, they love me. They wouldn't used to let me in their house because they were scared I was going to steal. Today they give me the key and leave me there because they saw well, back and Magdalene and they see something that I didn't see. And I just don't want to go back out there and live and have to turn a trick and wondering if I'm going to wake up in the morning without being beat up or raped or going to jail and the, just the shit you go through. It's easier if you do the right thing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a grab baby. <laughs> I've changed so much from this to where I'm at today and I ain't willing to give it up. Penny had hit bottom when she changed her life. Other women haven't gotten to that point yet. And if you ride around with Vice Squad detective Matthew Dixon, you'll find within moments, women still hooked on the lifestyle. Please answer my phone. Please, A69. What, what do you want me to say to him? I just got arrested. I'll let you call him in a minute. Thank you. I'm just really nervous. I don't want okay. to go back to jail. You know what I'm saying? But I have no warrants or nothing. Well, what were you in jail for last time? How many times have you been arrested for prostitution? Four. Four when did you start prostituting? Seventeen. Do you have any kids? I'm four year old little girl. Oh God. Oh God. Is there hope? Just let me know that. There's always hope everywhere. All right, thank you. That's all I want to know. I don't care if prostitution is the oldest form of sexual abuse in the history of mankind or the oldest work or whatever anybody says. I don't think people have to stay in it forever. I think people have a choice also to say, I want to live differently now, and I want to have a life, and I want to see my children, and I want to know what it means to forgive people that abused me when I was a kid. I want to know what that feels like and what that looks like. With the great big hug, Anna. From me to you. We peel off the layers one by one as we talk about ourselves and get the help that we need and it brings to the little pretty purple flower at the top. That you know, it's beautiful. But we grow everywhere and survive through anything. And the motto is love heals. 